Hi, I'm Miller, and welcome to another Miller's Game Room video. I don't make too many dedicated visual videos, but when I do, I always want to make them a bit special, hence why I've done all these retrospectives. Plus, also with Valentine's Day last week and no Nintendo Direct, despite weeks of rumours, I had a spare gap in my schedule to fill, so I figured now's the perfect time to make a list of my favourite romance vision novels and why I love them as of February 2024. I'll be covering all genres, Bishoujo, Otome, Yuri and Yaoi are all eligible and here. However, there will be no RPGs with romance options, so no Persona, no Trails or anything like that. I plan to touch those in a separate video down the line. I will also avoid plot spoilers. These games are in no particular order, so let's get straight into it. If I had to pick a favourite out of all the games on this list, in terms of pure romance and feel good vibes, it's Cupid Parasite. In this game, you play as literal Cupid, the god of love otherwise known as Lynette Mira, when she journeys down to the world below to prove to her father, the god Zeus, that humans don't need the power of the gods to find true love. She eventually finds work at a matchmaking company, Cupid Corporation, and she is tasked with finding love for the Parasite 5, five men who are undateable for different reasons. It's a perfect setup for a romantic comedy, and Cupid Parasite delivered on this unique premise. This Otome game is among Otome's most popular titles in the modern Switch era, both in Japan and overseas, and it's easy to see why. Yuya's art style is vibrant and beautiful, the comedic skits are genuinely funny, the music is fantastic, and the guys themselves are all lovable and unique. I found myself clicking with all the guys, even Alan Melville, who I originally wasn't fond of due to my dislike of bad boy tropes. I also wasn't sure how much I'd enjoy this game, given I normally struggle to get into romantic stories that are really light on story and lore. And while Cupid Parasite definitely has some lore, it's not the reason you play this game. The romance is, and it's so lovely seeing the literal god of love falling in love herself. It's my favourite Otome game to date, my favourite visual novel currently available on the Nintendo Switch, and I can't wait to check out the fan disc Sweet and Spicy Darling when it launches later this year in 2024. This next game recently celebrated its 5th anniversary, and that's Heart of the Woods, which originally released for PC back in 2019. Developed by Studio Elan, this is one of the most well-known Yuri Vision novels developed outside of Japan, and is also one of the best, and hence is why it's on this list. In this game, two online creators, Mandy and Tara, travel to a mysterious village called Eisenfeld. This is a response to an invitation from Morgan, a local fan, regarding supernatural events going on in the village. One of these supernatural elements is an actual ghost named Abigail, and all this is a unique setup that paves the way for a captivating adventure. The dynamic between the four women is really lovely to see, the romance between them is weaved authentically into the overall story, which I thoroughly enjoyed, and it really enriched the experience. Some other aspects of this game that I love include its excellent LGBTQ representation, the high quality English voice acting, very rare for any vision novel, as well as its presentation. The art and music make this game even more immersive than it was before. Even during the more tense scenes, there's this cosy, alluring atmosphere that I can't help but love. It makes the romance that much sweeter. While Heart of the Woods has a short runtime, it's time very well spent with great pacing. And while I enjoyed this game a lot when I first played it, over time it's really grown on me and is now among the first Yuri VNs I think of when it comes to recommending stuff. Of all the Yuri Vision novels I've played today, this one is my favourite. Heart of the Woods later got a console port, as well as a physical release via limited run games, which I also think speaks to its quality. I wouldn't mind picking up a physical copy of this game at some point, it is that good. I really need to play more English original VNs, as games like Heart of the Woods show the potential for them to meet, if not exceed, Japanese made vision novels. One of the earliest Otome games to get an official western release is Nor 9 Var Commons. It was also one of the first romance heavy games to ever get an official English release, originally on the PS Vita in 2015. This game is set on the Norn, a magical ship travelling through an alternative Taisho era planet Earth. Everyone on board has an important role to play at the end of the ship's journey throughout this fascinating world. They are all espers who each have their own magical powers, and just as there are allies who support the espers and their mission, there are also enemies too, adding an extra layer of political intrigue. There's a lot more to this setting which I loved and was immersed in almost instantly, however it's not fully elaborated on until it's fan disc last era, and I think the fact that I love this game due to its character interactions and romance building speaks volumes. Part of the reason why is the large cast. You have three heroines who can each romance three of the nine guys on the ship each, and this is before mentioning childhood prodigy Serata, who is the protagonist in both the epilogue and the prologue. It's a setup rarely seen in vision novels and really helped each route feel fresh and unique. This is especially important given all characters, including the heroines, are fully voiced. 
It really adds a sense of immersion and unique perspectives that you tend to rarely get with visual novels in general. I also liked that each route was slightly shorter than the average romance route, meaning it was easier for me to remain engaged and fully grasp the story. I played the original Vita localization back in the day, which did have some issues, however they've fortunately been fixed for the Nintendo Switch re-release last year. That Switch version is what I recommend picking up. I found myself really appreciating the game more revisiting a second time with this better translation. I also rarely replay games, so it also goes to show how much I enjoyed this one. Out of all of Otome's legacy Otome games, this one is still my favourite, and I hope we get to see more legacy Otome stuff in the future, because Nor 9 deserves some good competition. Now into the most well known boys love game ever made, and also one of my favourite games, Dramatical Murder, also known as DMMD. This game stars Alba, who is forced to engage with various strange goings on on the island of Midorijima to protect what matters to him. This includes the corruption of the Toei Corporation, the VR game Rhyme, mysterious nightclubs, as well as lots of gangs. This is a very plot heavy game with a lot of dark content, although it is tamed by Nitro Plus standards. This really helps make the romantic relationships in this game all the more sweeter in those few moments of calm. The turbulent events Alba and his allies go through help build deep connections between them and ultimately build their relationships. It's so deeply interlinked it impressed me and left a lasting impact, especially with the endings. Now I do know Dramatic Murder has a bad reputation which I don't think it deserves. It's even banned on Twitch, most likely due to the fan translation coming out years before the official release and the Twitch mods judging the game based off that. Twitch should really unban it at this point, especially because it's on Steam. Much like Cupid Parasite, the music is incredible, with its genuinely funky soundtrack, which would be right at home in an actual nightclub. It's so memorable and unique, and it was to help this game feel so engaging. I recommend playing the All Ages Steam version, especially given how often it goes on sale. There's also a fan disc, Reconnect, which is currently not localized officially, but there is a fan translation I want to check out at some point, given that Jast rarely do fan discs, so are unlikely to bring it over themselves. Additionally, even though Nitro Plus has never been big on consoles, I hope they port and localise the PlayStation Vita version, Recode, on the Switch down the line. I'd love to replay this game again, with the extra route, and be able to easily recommend it to others, because this is a fantastic game that more people should experience. Now on to another game I've not actually talked about on the channel yet, Nightshade. No, not that Nightshade, this Nightshade. This is Red Entertainment's first localised Otome game, and is still the best game from them I've played. It was also my first historical visual novel, and I wasn't sure if I'd like it due to the genre. From what I've heard, historical VNs can be quite repetitive given their tendency to reenact real world events. I'm very glad though, that isn't the case here. Nightshade is a historical VN that stars Enju Ueno, an elite shinobi. Following years of intense training with her friends, most of them guys, she's given her first mission. However, during this mission, things go wrong, and she's forced to go on the run, putting herself, her friends, and her village in grave danger. It's a high stakes situation right from the start, and it's one of the main reasons why I love Nightshade so much. There are lots of intense battle sequences, complete with lots of historical drama and tragedy surrounding Enju and her allies. It can get quite heavy at times. However, what really made Nightshade for me is how the characters bonded throughout all the adversity they faced throughout the adventure. Each route is different, yet the core bond between Enju and the guys persists throughout everything, including the tragedies. It was bittersweet, but also really enjoyable to read and immerse myself in. I read the PC version, but this game is also available on Switch, as one of D3's many Otome game releases on the platform. Of all of the Otome games available on Switch and Steam though, Nightshade is top tier romance. I saved the best, and most predictable, romance visual or favourite for last, White Album 2. This is a multi-year love triangle drama story between protagonist Haruki and the two main heroines Setsuna and Kazusa as they bond before and after a performance at their high school festival, and all the devastation that follows. This is an extremely ambitious work that depicts the less rosy aspects of love, like mental illness, cheating and deception over several in-game years. The core, small cast of characters is really well developed, showcasing both the beauty and flaws of humans in love. There really is nothing like it, and it's really hard to describe without going into spoilers. It's both devastating and amazing at the same time. Every moment of happiness is then accompanied by feelings of sadness, and it's such an engaging story, and is one of the highest rated VNs of all time for a reason. Given White Album 2 is by the same creators of the Utah Wabano series, it shares a lot of the same high quality storytelling and presentation, even if you don't notice it at first due to the huge contrast in setting, the Act Plus DNA is very much there. Additionally, given how much love Act Plus has shown the White Album franchise as of late, 
I'm confident that the official localization of White Happen 2 is on its way later this year or in 2025. It'd likely be just a PC, but hopefully it comes to Switch too. But regardless of when and where it turns up, I will fangirl about it again at length. This VN is a must play if this kind of story interests you. And that's going to do it for my list. I know there are so many more romance titles I've yet to play, like there's nothing by Key on here for example because I've just not played enough. So I hope down the line I couldn't make this into a top 10 or even a top 20. Anyway, what is your favourite romance vision novel or maybe romance game in general? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Please like, comment, subscribe and share the video around if you liked it and consider becoming a channel member if you can. Thanks so much. Bye bye.